Hello and welcome to my channel to all new and existing subscribers. Today I've got another product review. Today I'm featuring a product by RTV Box, and this one is the R10 Rockchip RK3328 Android 7.14K TV Box. After the short break I'll be doing a full review of its hardware and features, so stay tuned. We have more in moment. Welcome back. The R10 comes in this black box with no specifications listed anywhere on the outside, so I'll waste no time and move on with the unboxing. The R10 runs on the Rockchip RK3328 quad core CPU. The GPU is the ARM Mali 450. This model comes with 4GB of RAM and 64GB of internal storage. It comes with 8.0 to 11 dual band Wi-Fi, and Bluetooth 4.1. So what you have in the box is the R10 TV box itself. You have this remote control. The remote is a wireless remote with omnidirectional control which is a nice addition, and a move in the right direction away from the regular infrared remotes. However, it doesn't have the free mouse movement like in the full Bluetooth Air mouse versions. You get your standard HDMI cable. A 5 volts 2.5 amps universal DC power adapter. And your user's setup guide. Let's take a look at what ports there are on this box. Well first of all the housing is made of plastic, and it's in a circular shape different from other boxes. So if I rotate the box, here you can see there's one HDMI port, a pair of USB 2.0 ports, there's also a blue USB 3.0, there's one RJ45 Ethernet LAN port, one optical audio port, one audio video jack, a slot to insert a micro SD card, and a DC power input. If I rotate even further to what you may consider to be the front of the box, here you have two silver fine wire mesh grills which are the ventilation holes for the box. To the top of the box, there's a blue LED power light power button combination. And to the bottom, there's a rubber pad for stabilization and a reset pin hole button. So it's time to set up this box and I'll continue in a moment. So I'm back. And here we are at the startup of the Arc 10. What we have is the Arc 10 logo startup animation which takes a few seconds. Once completed, you're then taken to the launcher. So here we are at the launcher, it's the same launcher used in their S10 model. One thing I noticed right away is that the launcher doesn't have a navigation bar and status bar for easy navigation. Some people who prefer to use the stock remote control will not have any issue with this launcher. However, power users like myself who multitask a lot and navigate to and from various screens using a regular mouse or mini touchpad keyboards would find this launcher not to their liking. Nonetheless, the launcher has the option to add and remove shortcuts, and the launcher is smooth and responsive. The apps section consists of only a few regular browsing Google and social media apps, so I'll add my usual set of apps and continue. Ok so I've installed all my apps, and the first order of business is to check to see if the box is rooted. And it shows that the R10 is not rooted, this means that the box is limited to those apps that don't require root access to work. This will affect power users like myself, but not so much people who simply stream movies. Let's see what the DRM information has to say. Well there's no surprise here, the R10 only has support for Google Widevine, and CENC Clear Key. These two DRM support allows streaming services like Netflix and others to only show in standard 720p quality. I'll now quickly run through its system and hardware information. So the manufacturer is Rockchip, and model is the R10. It comes with 4GB of RAM and 64GB of internal storage. 
This box has expandable storage up to 128GB via convertible storage. The CPU is the Rockchip RK3328 quad core 64 bit processor, running up to 1.5GHz. It also has support for 32 and 64 bit ABIs. The GPU is the ARM Mali 450MP graphics processor, with a refresh rate of 60Hz. It has dual band Wi Fi support, and Wi Fi Direct is supported. It runs on Android 7.1.2 Nougat operating system, and again it shows that the box is not rooted. The box runs a bit hot around 60 to 75 degrees Celsius, and passive cooling is difficult to use on this box because the vents are located only on the side. It comes with the usual set of codecs for streaming 4K videos such as H.264, HEVC and VP9 decoding. That's it for system and hardware information, it's now time for the benchmark results. The first set of results I have is the RAM and internal storage read and write speed. The Art N has a RAM copy speed of 2896 MB per second. The internal storage has a read speed of 103 MB per second and a write speed of 70. The internal storage speeds are higher than normal which is something to take note of. I now have the results of the Wi-Fi speed test. The results as you can see are somewhat disappointing, they fell way below my maximum speed of 40 MB. The Ethernet LAN connection also fell below by as much as 10 MB less. These scores are not good for this box. Let's look at the results of the Antutu benchmark. The results show that the R10 got an Antutu score of 34,425 and over. This score is okay but not very high at the same time. I now show you the Geekbench 4 CPU benchmarking scores. It shows that the box got a score of 531 single core and 1,382 multi core. This score is not too bad for a box in this range. The final score is the Ice Storm Extreme GPU benchmark. And the results show that the R10 got an Ice Storm Extreme score of 2166. It's a bit lower than average, but I've seen boxes in recent times with low benchmark score perform better than expected, so let's see how it does in the next segment. I now move on to the video and movie streaming features of this box. And I'll start with the movie and TV shows streaming features. I'll now run a couple of 4K video samples and we'll see how the box handles the various video types and frames per second.
the box performed okay, with all the videos playing in good quality. Let's see how it does in a 4K YouTube sample. Well as you can see the art and plays only up to 1080p quality. For my graphics and gaming demonstration, I'm running a cool little racing game called Pocket Rally. This game is compatible with all gamepads and mini touchpad keyboards, so there's no need for key mapping applications. So let's take in some racing action. So dear you have it, this game was really exciting to play, and the graphics handled quite well on this box. So in summary, the Arc TV box art N has some pros and cons. On the positive side, the box has some good hardware specs. It streams free movies and TV shows without problems. The 4K video samples played ok without issues, and the 3D gaming is smooth and in good quality. The remote is a wireless omnidirectional control, and it comes with its own USB dongle. On the flip side, the box is not rooted. There is no navigation bar or status bar. The box runs a bit hot which increases the chance of overheating. Wi-Fi reception is not very good, and key mapping and mirroring apps will not be able to work on this box unless they update the firmware granting root access. So viewers, dear we have it. I've come to the end of my review of the Arc TV Box Art N. If you are interested in this box links were placed in the description area right below this video. Thanks for watching, if the information contained in this video was of some value, click the like button. If you have interest in this box share it with some friends, and don't forget to click the subscribe button for more TV Box Top presentations.